Let's take a look at the Sony setup guide. This is for the Sony 5000, 6000, 7000, and GTZ 380. Let's first focus on something we need to know for the MV display configuration menu. We have to pick what kind of resolution setting that we want. So for the Sony 5000, 6000, and 7000, we're always going to want to set this in the MV to 3840 by 2160. That's because that is the native panel of this display. Now, for the Sony GTZ 380, that actually uses a native panel of 4096 by 2160. So if you have a scope screen, meaning a screen that is greater in aspect ratio than 16 by 9, you're going to want to set that resolution setting in the Envy to the 4096 by 2160 instead. So even if you have a GTZ 380, if you do not have a scope screen, you're going to use a 3840 by 2160. Peak luminance, we'll set that in the MV. We're going to cover that in an upcoming lesson. On the MV display calibration menu, you'll need to set the transfer function and the gamut settings. Now, we talked in previous lessons about how the transfer function needs to match the gamma setting in the display. In the case of the Sony, the gamma runs a little bit different. So if we choose a gamma correction value of 2.6 in the Sony, that will typically equate to about a 2.4 effective gamma. So we want to put the Sony gamma correction value to 2.6, and in the MV, we'll use 2.4. We also want to change the gamut in the same MV menu to BT2020. You can see these selections here. This goes on to talk about if you're using a scope screen, you need to set this up in the MV configuration screen for the screen configuration. We'll go ahead and take care of that in a future lesson. Now, most importantly, in the Sony picture menu, you want to turn reality creation off or use it lightly, such as a resolution at 15 or lower. Noise filtering should be off or no higher than 10, and defocus optimizer should be off. Although sharpness of 15 is generally optimal, you may prefer much higher settings, so you can suit that to taste. Typically, you would do sharpening in the MV instead. For the basic picture settings, we want to choose the picture mode of Cinema Film 2, set the contrast to max, set the brightness between 50 and 52, color to 50, hue to 50, color temperature to D65. This is for best results. We do recommend calibration on these displays. Note that the contrast and brightness should be checked with test patterns. We're going to cover that in a future lesson. In the Sony Cinema Black Pro menu, we recommend using dynamic control and setting that to limit, but it is okay to use full or off, so suit that to taste. For laser light output, we recommend setting this to 100, especially for larger screens. This will, however, result in louder fan noise from the Sony, in which case you may want to try backing it off at 99 or 98 and so forth if the fan noise from the Sony is bothersome. The dynamic HDR enhancer, we recommend that being off as the Envy will handle all HDR functions. Now, you need to follow these next steps to make sure that the MV handles the color spaces properly. So, you want to change the HDR option in the Sony from auto to off. Don't worry, you'll still be watching HDR. Now, if you're not going to use a calibration, or if you're doing a calibration in the MV with a 1D LUT only, you want to change the color space here in the Sony to BT2020. If you'll be doing a calibration with a 3D LUT in the MV, use a color space of color space too. We also recommend for the highest quality motion handling to turn motion flow off and instead use the Envy's motion AI feature in the Envy Extreme. If, however, you have an Envy Pro, you can turn motion flow to off or use True Cinema. As a side note, motion flow should always be off when performing calibration. Next, in the Sony setup menu, set network management to on That'll be useful later when we add IP control directly to the MV. Under the Sony function menu, set the dynamic range for the HDMI ports to limit it. Change the HDMI type from standard 9 gigabit per second to enhance 18 gigabits per second. Just make sure your cables are up to snuff. 
Under the Sony Expert menu, we recommend setting everything to off, except for one exception, that would be the smooth gradation, which can be utilized at the low level if desired. Make sure, however, that if you're doing a calibration, that is off. And set the HDR mode to off for everyday use. From the installation menu, in the anamorphic option, you can set this to 1.24 or 1.32. This won't matter because it won't be used. The aspect should be set to normal, even if you have an anamorphic lens. In which case, select this option and appropriate stretch factor in the MV screen configuration menu, not in the Sony. As a quick sanity check, you can play HDR 4K content, except for a couple of movies you see listed here. Check that the NV incoming signal shows as 23.976. If it shows at 59.94 or 60p, double check your settings on your source device that they're set up to play back properly at 24p. When playing 4K HDR movie, check the NV incoming signal information to make sure the transfer function shows HDR. That's on the incoming signal, not the outgoing signal. The outgoing signal should still show SDR. If the colors look undersaturated or oversaturated, double check the Sony menu to make sure that you're using the corresponding color space as we covered a little bit earlier in this video. Well, that's a wrap for the Sony setup guide. Let's move on to our next lesson.